Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will look at cations behaving as weak acids um, and identifying if they are behaving as weak acids or if they're just pH neutral. <clears throat> so if we're looking at counter ions of strong bases, then these particular cations are actually pH neutral. <clears throat> and so those um, cations are, if you look down below, alkali metal cations, which are in the group 1A. In the periodic table, and alkaline earth metals, which are group 2A. <clears throat> so for example, sodium is the counter ion for sodium hydroxide. And we know if we put sodium hydroxide in solution, it complete, completely dissociates into the sodium cations and the hydroxide anions. And so since sodium is a counter ion to the strong base sodium hydroxide, it's just pH neutral. It's not gonna ionize water, it's not gonna affect the pH of the solution. <clears throat> So once again, counter ions of strong bases are pH neutral. Remember, there was only six strong bases that you had to learn. They were the alkali metal cation hydroxides and the alkaline earth metal cation um, hydroxides as well. So group 1A, group 2A hydroxides. All right, now let's say you have the conjugate acid of weak base. They are themselves weak acids. classic example you can think of is ammonium cation. It is a weak acid and its conjugate base is ammonia and we know ammonia to be a weak base. And then the conjugate acid of water, because water in this case is acting as a base, we have the hydronium ion here. And so ammonium is a weak acid and ammonia is a weak base and so therefore if you had ammonium it will make the solution acidic by producing um, some hydronium ions in solution now there are other cations um, that also can make a solution acidic and these are the small highly charged metals like aluminum three plus and those transition metals. <clears throat> These particular cations have the ability to ionize water. So for example, if we had aluminum three plus in the presence of water, it will form a hydrate here. <clears throat> or actually the water will coordinate itself as a ligand around the aluminum cation. Now these are coordination compounds different than what we studied before with like organic molecules which have covalent bonds um, and different than ionic compounds. But this is what this will look like when water is surrounding itself around the aluminum. <clears throat> if you go on to take an inorganic chemistry course. Usually you take that as an upper division class. You'll learn about all sorts of coordination compounds. Um, this is giving you an example of one. And we say that anything attached to the central atom or coordinating the central atom, these are called ligands, L-I-G-A-N-D-S. And these aren't technically covalent bonds, they're coordination bonds there. But don't worry about predicting the structure. I'm only showing you to give you a nice visual here. 
and to illustrate a point. So we are going to have water come in and it's going to pull off one of these protons. Everything else stays the same. Just finishing drawing the molecule here. And when water pulled off a proton, it formed the conjugate acid of water, which is the hydronium ion. And so the fact that it was able to ionize water creates more hydronium ions in solution, you would see an acidic solution. <clears throat> so in summary, cations that are small and highly charged metals will form slightly acidic solutions due to the fact that water can be ionized by this process here to form hydronium ions. Alkali metal cations and alkaline earth metals do not ionize water in this way. And therefore, that's why they are pH neutral. All right. Do an example problem together. Let's determine whether each cation is acidic or pH neutral. And for the cations that are acidic, let's write an equation that shows how the cation acts as an acid. So the first one is strontium 2 plus. I see that this is a cation with a plus 2 charge. I look on the periodic table, it's in group 2A. So it's one of those alkaline earth metals. And I remember it comes from strontium hydroxide, or it can come from that strong base. And this is a very strong base. And counter ion of a strong base is pH neutral. So if you see strontium cations in your solution, they're not gonna affect the pH at all. Same goes for lithium. Lithium is a group 1A element. You can think of lithium hydroxide as one of the strong bases. And that counter ion of a strong base is pH neutral. And then finally, we see this ion here and this cation. Um, that doesn't look like a group 1A or group 2A cation, so we can assume um, it's most likely a weak acid. It's also not a small, highly charged metal cation. So this must be the conjugate acid of a weak base. and therefore it must be acidic. Let's write the equation to prove that that is what's occurring here. So this particular compound um, is the conjugate acid of pyridine. So I'm gonna draw this structure. Once again, you don't need to memorize this for my class. I like to show structures to give you a better visual and understanding of what's going on with the chemistry here. So, this is C5H5NH with a positive um, plus one formal charge on the nitrogen in the presence of water. Water will act as a base. These electrons here will pull off this proton and those two electrons have to go somewhere and they're gonna go onto the nitrogen. We're in equilibria here and draw what's left over. The 
this is pyridine. And now our water molecule has an extra hydrogen on it. It's turned into the conjugate acid of water, which is the hydronium ion here. And so we see how the conjugate acid of pyridine actually was able to produce some hydronium ions in solution, which makes it acidic. It's the conjugate acid of a weak base. And we learned in a previous video when we talked about bases, those nitrogen, um, nitrogen molecules that have that lone pair, they behave as good bases. Not strong bases, but decent weak bases. So you see that very common due to those lone pairs of electrons. They can come in, if we went in the reverse direction, come in, pull off a proton, those electrons go here, and then that's where you get the conjugate acid in water. Now to show this in a general chemistry format, you can just write out the formula, C5H5, NH plus, plus water, C5H5, N, Like so. so you can see the transfer of that proton. This is the acid. Um, this is this is the acid. This is acting as a base, so it lost a proton and therefore became that conjugate base. Water gained a proton and therefore you have your conjugate acid. So this shows that the conjugate acid of a weak base is therefore itself acidic. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.